very good afternoon everyone um, we have uh, we have we are organizing a series of webinar uh, in uh, from adamas university and uh, this is our first webinar from the department of geography school of science from the department and from the school i welcome all of you i spe i especially welcome dr devendra pradhan who is our guest uh, speaker today he is from uh, he is the director of indian meteorological department I welcome our dean sir, Professor Vimal Kumar Sharkar. I welcome Professor Shonji Kosh, and I welcome all the esteemed faculty members who have joined us, and all other participants, all all other school students, college students. Uh, I welcome all of you. So, to start the program, I would like to request Professor Vimal Kumar Sharkar. Hmm. Yes, ma'am. Uh, today it's a pleasure that uh, Department of Geography, uh, School of Basic and Applied Sciences, uh, is organizing the webinar uh, Roadmap of Future Geographers 2020. And uh, it's a pleasure and honor Dr. Devendra Prudhan, Director, Indian Meteorological Department, kindly accepted our invitation and uh, 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 very kindly uh, just uh, agreed to give us a just a speech today and uh, I'm quite sure that uh, this uh, talk will be uh, very enrichful and uh, uh, will help if we have some queries in this moment how geographers can help uh, will be found from his lecture and uh, uh, it's a pleasure that uh, participants they are very much eager to join this session and uh, obviously we'll uh, find some information from this speech today and uh, uh, the department of geography the Adams university is always just finding always some innovative idea how to impart the geography education to the students experience and the geography department is very strong enough for uh, having very strong infrastructure, laboratory, good pool of faculty members, and uh, very often organizing such kind of uh, seminars, conferences, workshop, uh, which is an added value to the program of the geography. So I'm quite sure today, this webinar is one of such activity will be conducted, and this session will be very, very helpful for the students, for the researchers, for the faculty members also. I wish all the success of this webinar today. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. And now I would like to request Professor Shonji Kosh. Uh, sir, you are associated with us uh, since the beginning. He is a retired professor of chemistry, ex principal of Presidency University, then Presidency College. Uh, sir, if you can say a few words, that would be our.
queries, all the questions that will be answered definitely by Dr. Pradhan, who will be, all the attendees will uh, be uh, answered. Uh, be, uh, sir, before you start, before Dr. Pradhan starts, because I can see many of the faculty members here, and uh, we didn't meet in Adamas University uh, in, uh, before uh, this lockdown period when we have organized various conferences, seminars, workshops. So just for them and for other participants and students, I would like to show you a brief PPT on uh, our achievements in Adamas University uh, during this la only last one year. It's a very brief PPT. It will take some two to three minutes of time. Uh, just uh, allow me to share my screen. Uh, sir, could you please allow me to share my screen? Shortcut, could you please allow me to share my screen? Yes, already it is shared. It is ah, shared. Yes, sir, I can see. Thank you. The Department of uh, Geography uh, in Adamas. Madam, could you screen us? Is it coming now? No, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It's coming. Yes, it, it just bear with me. My computer is little slow. That, that's all. Uh, so, uh, the Department of Geography was established in uh, 2015 in Aramis University and uh, just this is a brief overview of what we have done in only last year. We have achieved many things during this five years. Uh, this is our uh, uh, curriculum that we are using um, C uh, CBCS choice based credit system and this is the BSc program where we offer various type of discipline specific elective courses, internship, field projects and ability enhancement enhancement courses and of course with uh, genetic elective and core courses. Uh, in MSc also we offer various elective courses, advanced environmental geography, geomorphology, ha and hazard, urban and regional planning, hydrometeorology, remote sensing. Along with this we have field project, dissertation and uh, foundation yes, uh, courses. Yes, it's a very uh, and, my pleasure. Speak up.
or all. But nowadays, this concept totally changed. Is not that because no is. I should just suggest that today you have chosen level and obviously it is supporting the But here, if one student comes to our program,
sorry to interrupt you. I think that there is some technical problem that uh, YouTube attendees are unable to hear you. Sir, could you please just hold for one minute? Let us see that uh, what is the problem. They, they also don't want to miss your presentation. Okay. Then, uh, yeah, just pass it for one minute. Hello. Okay, we, the, we are seeing this one. What is the connection? Please just uh, uh, now it is audible in YouTube also. Um, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Sir, okay. uh, I would like to request Dr. Srikant, sir, please. Please, sorry, sir, extremely sorry for this. So, if everybody is uh, able to hear me, I would like to thank you for the presentation. Uh, I hope you are able to see this presentation. Yes, sir. Prediction and monitoring of topics. I mean, it will be the first. Is it okay? Should I continue? Uh, YouTube. It is it is now audible in YouTube. I am hearing. Kinto Amit Shunche can Uh, yes, you can continue, please. Has been adopted by WMO and it is in use now until 2020. 
Monday for naming of the sanctions. I show you that there are the since there are 30 countries, so there is a matrix of 13 by 13. That is 159 sanctions will be there, which will be named by this. So in the first column, the name of the country. The names of the countries are given and just in front of that, all these cyclones have been nomenclatured. For example, after this one, when the next one will come from Bangladesh, the name will be name given by one Sarka. After that, yeah, and then the next one will be there. Iran, Maldives, Myanmar, Oman, Pakistan, Qatar, and so So this is a list of this is a list of 116 sites. And if you go to the the uh, there are the two important instruments which are being used by I can read. And another. So these are some of the typical pictures which you can see that Kapoor uh, at the different places, including Kolkata, they have monitored. The first one was it was cyclone in 15, on 15 November. This is about 20 kilometers south of Pakistan. It is a 9 kilometers southwest of India. It is very likely to move nearly north northwards for some more times. Then not north northeast across mountains they have been gone. What is is the rainfall is expected between Iga and Island in Bangladesh close to Sundarbans during the afternoon evening of 20th May or maybe in the morning of 21st and that thing it will be in the category extremely serious as and maximum wind speed is expected to be around 175 to 180 kilometers per hour so this is the uh, expected movement of the super cyclonic storm that it will be having the super cyclonic same then will come down 19th Will be extremely and then on 20th and 21st, then it is going to it, it will be a very thick cyclonic storm. When the wind speed, as you can see in the third column, maximum sustained surface wind will be around 145 to 155 gusting to 160. So, all the people here, those who are in that area in uh, near Ulsa, West Bengal, and the Bangladesh, they are uh, born here that they should not venture outside, they should remain confined in the sea. Already the situation is having the corona, uh, the same confinement and the lockdown period is there. So once again, since both the things are very dangerous here, it is advised from India Med Department and from myself that nobody should come outside, they should remain in the houses and they should go away from the sea. And this is the movie which I am going to show you. It is a latest movie that from light images how the system is moving towards visa and it will take a recurvature slightly it will not hit towards the odisha it is it will take a recurvature in the direction of west bengal 
which you can see very well that how the system is moving and at the center also you can say very clearly which i am showing you here that how the uh, eye of the cyclone can be seen very clearly in the satellite image here and it shows that the stage is very advanced it is in the uh, advanced stage of super cyclonic storm so this is the now another this uh, graph i am going to show you it is the latest one it shows observed and for forecast trick along with the cone of uncertainty the meaning of cone of uncertainty means that this the center line shows that expected movement will be along the center but as our numerical models are having there is some unkind some kind of uncertainty it may go little bit away slightly left or slightly right such that this is the cone of uncertainty that can go around 25 kilometers each side and this particular picture shows that what is the wind speed expected here so at the different timings 18 18 19 06 and as all the geography students and professors know that nowadays the time is mentioned in the utc utc is seen as earlier gmt and uh, iest is nothing but uh, gmt or utc plus five plus 30 so accordingly we can see that how the system will be moving and where it is going to be so from the center you can see it is just crossing the sagar island and it is going towards bangladesh but in the things also there will be lot of activities with respect to wind and a strong surge in heavy rainfall is also expected this is the another graph which is showing that how in the different coordinates wind distribution of the super cyclonic is so yeah bengal has been divided into four quadrant so the center part towards is a north part of this bengal bengal thing here that how the system will be moving and what kind of intensity it may acquire so this is a very important information for you all because after two days uh, there will be lot of rainfall heavy rainfall very strong winds and the system is going to move Slightly recurve which are towards the West Bengal and Bangladesh. Wind warning is given for West Bengal and Odisha. This is very very important to know, and especially when I am talking to uh, my professor friends as well as the students of geography, they should know that uh, cyclonic storm is one of the very 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 important and uh, uh, severe weather phenomena, and in the bay of bengal especially because most of the cyclones are taking place in the uh, bay of bengal but some of these are available in the arabian sea also. so gale wind speed reaching 165 to 170 kph gusting to 195 kph very likely along and off is madripur and north and south 24 pargana district so this information is very much needed by all the students they should know that how imd issues are and i am sharing you one very important thing because in the ministry of our sciences a unit is there that is known as inquis which is responsible for the issue of storm surge so you can see here this is the prediction of the storm surge by the inquis here and inquis gives this information with imd so as per the warning given by the inquis the storm surge warning i am uh, sharing with you About four to five meters above astronomical tide is likely to inundate low-lying areas of south and north 24 Parganas, and about three to four meters over the low-lying areas of East Madhyapur district of West Bengal during the time of the land. So you can see here it is around four to five meters, say approximately 12 to 15 feet height storm surge is expected here. All those who are there in this region, they should come out of that and they should go at least 10 kilometers. Away from the coast. So here, I just give a, a pause for a moment uh, because I wanted to show the current here. You here. So there is any question regarding this cyclone from any of the participants? If anyone wants to ask anything, you can mute yourself. Good evening, yourself. sir. Good evening, sir. Yes. Uh, uh, to all the teachers and teachers, I want to 
Unable to go back here. Okay, sir. But, 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 but which graph you want? One is the quadrant graph, and another was the uh, cone of uncertainty. Which one you want? Uh, the cone of uncertainty, sir. Okay. Uh, basically, just please go to the next slide. Next slide. Next slide. All of you, please mute yourself. It's uh, noisy, so I request all of you to please mute yourself, except the speaker. And uh, who wants to question, then you unmute yourself. But please, rest of the time, please mute yourself. Request for all. Yeah, I am coming back to the same graph which uh, one of our friends wants to know here. Uh, are you talking of this graph? Uh, yes, sir. But the next one, the next one. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. If it is uh, having a problem, then it's okay. That you can just discuss also. I'm just trying to go back there. Good work. Okay. Okay. Actually. Uh, we are predicting the moment of the cyclone using our numerical weather prediction. Is it okay? You know NWT? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm talking about this. So, this shows uh, that we are utilizing our numerical weather prediction models, NWP models, because it is a long duration uh, prediction here for four to five days. So, all the numerical models are having some uh, uncertainty that is an error here, plus minus. So, we keep into consideration those things here that when, once it is going in that way, that how it is moving and they have, we have already given that uh, uh, if you see these different colors are there, that warning is there, very rough sea, then high to high sea, uh, high to very high, very high seas. So different warnings are available here and we can show here that what will be the different uh, intensity prediction here. So this is once again, uh, quadrant wind distribution of the super cyclone here that is in the different quadrants uh, as I already told you that overall Bay of Bengal has been divided into the four quadrants here so since it is going from the central part towards the northern part here so what is the wind uh, winds uh, there uh, expected winds are there which is shown in this way is it okay yes thank you sir thank you sir Almost it is similar to the previous one, but there is slight difference with respect to the different color combinations that during uh, outermost color and inner, then what different uh, uh, sea conditions may be available. This is the thing shown in. Uh, sir, uh, yes, sir. Sir, uh, there are some few questions that are coming from YouTube. Sir, uh, may I read the questions for you? Yes, you are welcome. Okay, uh, sir. Uh, someone has asked that uh, will Amphan be a Category Five hurricane according to the norms followed in USA? 
are even to say we are calling it as hurricane and uh, in india it is in tropical cyclone both are almost similar so their category 5 is again in the category of uh, super cyclone so almost of the same category uh, cyclone is there but this is still within the sea only far up from the coast so when it will go towards the coast it will lose slight its intensity and it will come to the extremely severe cyclonic uh, storm here and at the time of the landfall it will be reducing its uh, intensity once more but you can say it is comparable to almost four to five category of the hurricanes in us okay thank you sir sir there is a question from aditya subha uh, sir will the cyclone have any effect in darjeeling himalayan region no because it is far up there in the darjeeling himalayan region is there see even in the kolkata which is around 100 kilometers from diga uh, if we take aerial distance also so you can see that not much of the damages will occur uh, for the kolkata city but the uh, wind speed will be quite high almost of the speed of around 120 even 30 kilometers per hour so maximum wind speed will be there in the sundarban area diga and in, in the bangladesh side and odisha and west bengal then the wind speed may be of the order of 140 150 kilometers per hour and uh, gusting to around 170 km h but i think toward darjeeling and sikkim and that area no, no nothing will happen okay sir sir have uh, sir someone asked you to briefly explain about astronomical tide is it this... uh, yes sir. yeah see oh, you know about this high tide and the neap tides during this full moon and uh, no moon cases here so those things which are related with the astronomical changes of the uh, change of the phases of the moon those are known as astronomical tides during the full moon the high tides are there during the uh, Uh, no moon it is the neap tides or the low tides are there but these tides or the storm surge is there because of this strong winds associated with the tropical cyclone so these uh, storm surge the high storm surges will be above those for example now since we are going towards this uh, uh, no moon side or new moon side so astronomical tides will not be much only the storm surge of the order of 4 to 5 meters will be there but had it been during the time of the full moon when the high tides are expected then that could have been a more, more disastrous so only uh, this particular condition will prevail of a storm surge of 4 to 5 meters thank you sir sir uh, will the cyclone cause any kind of delay of monsoon pujarini hosh has asked mm-hmm. yes many times it happens because Uh, it is uh, taking a lot of moisture along with this very big cyclone which has happened few times in uh, during the last so many years so when the uh, it is 20th the 21st of the may when it is going to hit here it is taking a lot of moisture and as we all know on the kerala coast the onset date is uh, 29th may to 1st june yes. so there may be some chances but uh, i may not like to state anything about this part here because this is dealt by the our uh, senior scientist and uh, this is not uh, uh, clearly known with only few days in advance we are able to say but likely chances may be there okay sir yes sir sir uh, like uh, there is one question from koushik bhui that uh, who is uh, listening us from youtube uh, sir cyclones are number of cyclones have increased uh, it is increasing day by day sir uh, what are the probable cause behind this uh, it, it's a very relevant question here and yes. the answer is uh, answer is not so simple because if i say that climate change is responsible for this so i cannot blame the climate change here Uh, so many other factors are equally responsible here earlier we used to say global warming is taking place but if you see as on today that uh, during this uh, uh, may 18th or may uh, 17th 18th the temperature of delhi is just 41 42 degrees celsius not much of the activities are there so uh, we cannot say directly that climate change is wholly responsible for this many other factors are equally contributing to this uh, severe weather changes increase in the frequency so i do agree that the number of tropical cyclones are increasing here but not only one factor there are so many other factors which contribute towards this thank you sir 
Sir, why Tamil Nadu experiences another question from Devaprata Mandal that why Tamil Nadu experiences less number of cyclone landforms in East Coast Peninsula? Uh, basically, the cyclones are formed almost seven degree, eight degree uh, latitude here. So whenever they are formed slightly away from the coast here, their movement is not exactly westwardly, westwardly or northwestwardly. They move slightly northerly and they are going upwards here. Since uh, Chennai, Tamil Nadu is the lower part of this Indian continent here, so in that case it is going slightly skirting Tamil Nadu. But last year also some of the cyclones in before last year also we had some cyclones, but as compared to Odisha and Andhra Pradesh. Yes, this is true that the Tamil Nadu coast is not uh, expecting many cyclones because when the cyclone is formed around 7 to 800 kilometers away from the coast here, usually it just goes away from the Tamil Nadu towards Andhra Pradesh, Odisha, or towards Presley. Okay, sir. Sarah, there are few more questions. Sir, would you like to take the questions now or I, uh, you will like to answer it later? Because uh, there are many more questions that are, that are also number of questions are constantly increasing, sir. Like no, there are is, yes, yes, sir. It is up to you. Okay, sir. So then I am clubbing uh, various questions because uh, there are similarity in questions. Like uh, some some two three people have asked that whether this Amphan cyclone will have any kind of impact of air quality or we can say that any kind of uh, impact of coronavirus. So I should I think that is. <laughs> Uh, one thing I want to tell yeah, you now, that, that wash away this coronavirus, <laughs> yeah, yeah. wash away many things, I, I just want to, coronavirus. I want to highlight the activities of our department, that our department is playing a very, very important role and one thing I would like to appreciate India Med Department, that not a single day the working is stopped, whatever be the conditions of prevailing, our all meteorological department friends are working, our director general is coming each and every day to the office including other offices and we have started the study in the month of March whether there is any impact of the temperature and humidity on the coronavirus. So this study is still going on as Professor Ghosh told in the beginning, stated in the beginning that there may not be a direct correlationship with respect to temperature and humidity like other kind of the viruses for this COVID-19. But even then our department is doing a lot of studies and collecting the data. Now the question is whether this cyclone is having any kind of the impact on this on pollution and this uh, corona. So I say uh, not uh, significantly. There will not be anything because number one it is already in the of bacon it is in the sea it will be having this lot of uh, strong wind and the moisture and since coronavirus is not having much of the effect with respect to humidity so i don't think that there will be any impact on these two uh, this thing even this pollution already it is very less because you know that air quality has been improved very significantly during this uh, last few months because of this um, uh, lockdown period here so, air pollution quality is increased, uh, quality wise, it has been significantly improved, not much, uh, no, no significant pollution has been observed all over this India here. So, I feel that this cyclone uh, will not have any impact on this COVID-19 virus as well as on the pollution. Thank you, sir. Sir, one last question from... Uh, one more question uh, from me also. Okay, okay, sir, sir. Uh, I want to know from uh, Dr. Pradhan that whether this uh, you know, cyclone has any effect on the animal life because it is in Sundarbon area. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, whether that is an effect or impact on the animal life. Uh, what yes. questions I, I was uh, about to read was about the uh, agricultural productivity. So, sir, you can uh, tell us together that uh, how, how much okay. agriculture productivity the animal life uh, this human life and animal life will be certainly affected here because this strong winds and the storm surge will be there. So animal life will be certainly affected here and for the, uh, this agriculture point of view also, uh, much damage will be there in that Sundarban area when it is directly going to hit there. Almost 8 to 10 kilometers area will be having its uh, complete damage of the crops and other things here in that area. And animals should have been taken away from 
the coast at least 10 kilometers away where the impact will be maximum between the Diga and uh, that uh, particular island in the Bangladesh. So it will ha it will have its very disaster uh, disastrous impact on this animal life too, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. No more question from Vietnam uh, uh, posted. So, sir, you can proceed for the next presentation. We are okay. eagerly waiting for the next. So, we were talking of this Amphan cyclone. Now, there are certain DWR observations with respect to funny cyclone which was there on 3rd May 2019. And uh, I want to share some of these things here. In the presentation mode, I will go. So here we can see these three uh, pictures of this funny cyclone on the 1st May 2019, uh, taken by the Vishakapatnam Doppler weather radar. This on the left side, you can see a, a clear eye is visible here, and the diameter is also visible. In this picture, which is uh, clearer, much better than the previous one, the coast where there is no uh, wind, no cloud is there, and surrounded by the so many spiral plants which you can see here. So this was also having the category of super cyclone, slightly less than that. So this kind of the structure will be there in the case of the Ampan uh, during the next few days. So how this cyclone was moving? which I am showing you that how the observations are taken and we can see its landfall gradually in the images. So the system is moving toward the coast here. help us to give the prediction that when when and how the system is moving and you can see that the cyclone when the eye of the cyclone is going to hit that area it is known as a landfall this is the landfall time for the funny cyclone which we can see that it is touching the eye of the cyclone is touching that part here means to be hit up on 3rd may 2019 and the time shows the 50 UTC and if you add five and a half hours, so it is morning nine hours twenty minutes. So we issue the warning that the system is going to that area, and when it is crossing that area, that also we issue the uh, D warning that the system has gone. These are the velocity images by which we <laughs> calculate the velocity of the winds and once again this is a beautiful picture in the center you can see that there is no wind and the blue color of the wind goes coming toward by shown by this blue color and red and other color Sir, sir uh, sorry to interrupt you, sir. Uh, just I want to request all the participants to mute yourself. Follow me. Could you please mute yourself? Well, I just uh, complete uh, the presentation again, which I wanted to show. But my basic objective was that when a master's degree or the research is done in the geography, that what should be the roadmap for the future process for a job. Uh, unfortunately, in IMD, there is no entry so far for MSC geography or PLD geography. But there is a proposal that India Med Department and other institutes will be having those students who are doing their career in this geography. 
because geography has got lot of information regarding uh, all geographical aspects, climatology, synoptic meteorology, and uh, many other things are taught here. So this particular field is very very good here. So this I'm just going to uh, discuss here that whenever we are having the research uh, in uh, our great postgraduation or the PhD in the geography, there are so many fields where the students can join. I have collected the information since I am a meteorologist. I am putting the meteorology, the climate change analysis, climatologist, hydrologist, remote sensing analysis, soil interstitials, emergence specialist, US uh, special analyst, GIS specialist, and so on. As Professor Mukherjee has already stated, many certificates are being taught. She was talking about this climate technology, hydrology, remote sensing, soil conservation. So I feel that the future, those who are doing their studies, uh, post graduation and the uh, research here, lot of uh, uh, future uh, prospects are there and options are there. So, is the meteorologist not university does? It is only the weather presenter that, like me, that I am showing you that it is going to have the uh, landfall at so and so place. Or, there will be heavy rainfall and the storm so. Basically, we have to do a lot of the study after collecting the information from land, sea and atmosphere and we do the research on this information which we get. And as I stated with, in response to a student who was asking me about this error or the bona but uncertainty, that uh, this information is given to the numerical models which are uh, working on a highly uh, sophisticated uh, supercomputers. I hope you know that there is one branch of uh, Ministry of Earth Sciences that is at Pune, Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology, where we are having high power computing systems. The, those are the best supercomputers in India used for the weather forecasting. So the information is collected by all uh, meteorologists here in the different fields and there are the two different tasks which are assigned to a weather forecaster here. Number one is to issue the forecasting and number two to do the research. So in the forecasting, collecting data from worldwide satellite images, measuring environmental factors, pressure, temperature, humidity, wind speed and direction. And I would like to state here that all these geograph uh, uh, geography students know that what are the instruments being used for observations of pressure, temperature, humidity, and how this data is very, very important. For the information for of you all, I just want to state few things that India Med Department has got a very large instruments observational network, which comprises of 27 Doppler weather radars. Weather radar, if we know, Doppler phenomena shows that uh, how the velocity of the cyclones and other things can be measured. We are utilizing inset 3D, inset 3DR, and polar orbiting satellites. India Met Department has got 600 surface observatories. Out of the 600, 200 are taking round the clock observations, which are fully equipped with the instruments and orthographic instruments, barograph, hygrograph, thermograph, and all other things are there. In addition, I hope you know about the seismology also. That is another part of IMD where we are going for this earthquake uh, uh, monitoring, not the prediction, only the monitoring because prediction is not possible. So our observation network is very, very large, containing uh, around 2,000 automatic weather stations, around uh, uh, more than three to 4,000 automatic rain gauges and many other instruments are there. So the data availability is there and where we are getting a lot of data. So for this, every year the recruitment is being done. Now, the recruitment is done at the two levels, one at the lower assistant level, where we are asking for BSc and MSc and the BTEC students. But I feel that MA, MSc geography students should also be invited for this. For this, a proposal is under consideration here that the geography students should also be invited to participate at this uh, entry level. And another is that through to UPSC. So that is a class one uh, group A officers are there. There also a provision will be made in the near future, I hope, whether the, where the geography students can join. 
so these are the things uh, which a geographer or the forecaster has to do it and in the research also many things have to be done in investigating air flow in the lowest 1 km of the atmosphere which is known as planetary boundary layer the physics of planet improving the accuracy of the forecast through developing and improving numerical and computer models monitoring climate variability and change and so on so on. because many things have to be done. so after the meteorologist the next is the climatologist so the difference in the meteorologist and climatologist is that a meteorologist does two things the forecasting and the research whereas climatologist collects the data over a long period of the time and taking all observations and then they uh, create a climatology and why climatology is important that we are preparing the average wind speed wind direction the average weekly daily monthly and yearly temperature for example when we talk about this minimum temperature in the during the winter year so we have the climate climatologically uh, temperature collected from more than 30 years of the data so that is the task given for the climatologist here who studies the weather patterns over a period of time and the different studies uh, which are to be carried out by the climatologist are studying and interpreting data map reports photographs and charts using computer models so difference between the meteorologist and climatologist can be understood here to get the data for a very long time to do the research to prepare the climatology to prepare the normals for the minimum maximum temperature the mini uh, what will be the prevailing winds speed and wind direction because wind is another important feature if we know uh, over a uh, particular place when, where the wind mills are there or something which is related with the wind aspect here the normal wind has to be uh, available there during the long period of time so that is a task which is given to the climatologist gathering data from weather stations satellites or radar stations and providing this information to the media so many things have been uh, uh, this is collected here in this presentation here now the third which is related with the atmosphere is climate change analysis the difference between the climatologist and the climate change is coming uh, very significantly the climate change analyst evaluates scientific data and research concerning the climate to create models and predictions about what could happen to the earth's climate in the future so this is uh, the topic of the today's discussion that how the earth's climate is changing now and what is with, will be the impacts in the near future so climate change analysts need to know both the policy and the scientific aspect of their work through roles tend to focus on one or the other and these are the different activities which are to be carried out by this climate change nowadays most of the institutes are working on the climate change studies here because the climate change is this factor where we have to be very careful that what will happen if the temperature increases by 0.5 degrees or 1 degree or 1.5 degree or what will be the change in the water level rise in the seas and melting of the glaciers and many many things are to be there with respect to the climate change aspects so those things are there and uh, i hope that all the students those who are watching that uh, google and other things they know that what are the different activities which can be carried out by the uh, different uh, this thing here uh, uh, experts here so i have taken only these three four things with respect to the meteorology but as i have shown you earlier that uh, a lot many things can be done after the study of this uh, post graduation or that uh, your research here in the geography so the field is very wide and i hope that the future will be uh, great for all those who are doing their studies in the geography so this was about my presentation so if there is any question please thank you sir thanks a lot there are lots of uh, gratitude from the participants as you have opened new prospects for uh, geographers and uh, sir there are few questions uh, sir uh, should i start asking you yeah, yeah. if you wish yes sir sir uh, uh, on the 
career aspect, uh, Rakesh has asked us that uh, if a student is not from pure science background and only from geography, is there any options for, for him or her to opt to metrology in fact that career? Sir, sir, just uh, before starting this, I would like to request you to stop uh, sharing your screen, sir. Yes. As I stated presently in India Med Department and Department of Science and Technology, this option is not available. But the uh, consideration is being given that geography students are doing a lot of uh, practical work, field studies, field experiments, and they have got a lot of information and the knowledge about the climatology, synoptic meteorology, general meteorology, and other things are there. So they will be having uh, a good uh, future prospects in these departments here. But I feel in the other departments which are related with the climate changes and uh, global warming and other things, these students can pursue this their career in the job. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. And from Cyclone, um, from, uh, for Ampan, there are a few questions uh, that, uh, sir, just let me. How South Bengal is uh, going to be affected or the why uh, there is uh, one question is that uh, we can see that in recent past the West Bengal coast is experiencing the landfalls, more landfalls of cyclones than Odisha and Andhra Pradesh. Is there any reason, specific reason behind this? Uh, this is uh, uh, very difficult to see because it all depends upon the initialization or the origin of the cyclone. If the cyclone is there in the lower part of this Bay of Bengal, that is a southern uh, part of the uh, Bay of Bengal, so they usually they do not travel toward this uh, uh, southern part of the Kolkata, I should say. So usually they are going toward the west or the northwest direction, so they hit either Andhra Pradesh or Odisha. Very few come to this Bay of Bengal. But when the formation takes place in the central bay, so the chances are there they will go toward the northern part of this uh, northern parts of the Bay of Bengal and there is a chance that they can hit this uh, south of this uh, West Bengal area. So this all depends upon the uh, formation, the place of formation of the cycle. Uh, not only this thing yet, the, uh, uh, the same time of formation is equally because you know that only that there are the two periods, the pre-monsoon and the post-monsoon. The studies have been done that in the post monsoon, the cyclones take the recurvature here. So, after going toward the northwest, then they take the recurvature. So, there are many things which are affected by this. Yes, sir. So, this is very difficult to say uh, that this particular cyclone, uh, whether it will go toward the southern part of the West Bengal or it will go toward the north, north coast, but only the numerical models give the idea that depending upon the wind pattern, because when the steering currents are there, which are going from the west to east, then only the northeasterly movement is possible. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, yes. Is, if pollution decreases, then uh, will it affect uh, the cyclone formation? Is there any uh, relationship between the pollution and uh, cyclone formation? Uh, I think uh, not significantly because there are the five parameters which are related with the genesis of the cyclone. And the most important is the sea surface temperature in the 50 feet air of the sea surface. That the sea surface temperature should be more than 26 or 26.5 degrees Celsius. What is it is should be there that it should be formed above 7 degree long, uh, latitude such that the Corrilis force may be there and this wind pattern should also be there, low level wind shear should uh, be there, uh, should be as small as possible. So in this 5 or 6 parameters, air pollution is not coming at all. So in my opinion, even if the pollution is reducing here, the formation of this cyclone uh, has no direct relationship. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have to just maybe a silly question. If 
probability of the cyclone is it in the in the summer is more probable or in the winter or in the you know rainy rainy season time? Is there any time frame that cyclone is more probable? Yes, sir. Cyclones are usually formed in the pre-monsoon and the post-monsoon. In the pre-monsoon months, April and May, these two months are very important, sir, because the direct sunlight when it is hitting the sea surface, the temperature goes beyond 26.5 or 27 degrees Celsius. And in the Bay of Bengal, the vorticity that is the moving of the winds, that is a low pressure creation because of the circulating wind, is uh, very likely. In the winter, also when, when not exactly winter, I should say the post monsoon after the September, that is the month, two months up to our end now. So there also when the uh, season monsoon ends here and then the uh, time to start with the temperature is slightly moderate here and all the features are there for the formation of the cyclone. So there are the two seasons which are very significant, April, May and 10th till 10th of the June. Similarly, from the 1st October till 15th of the December, around two and a half months, these months are very uh, important and responsible for the formation. But during the time of this uh, monsoon season, because of so many factors, the cyclones do not form. Even if a cyclone is formed, it is going to the state of deep depression or just the boundary case of the cyclone. So we see there are the two seasons, pre-monsoon and the post-monsoon, April, May till 10th of the June and October, November and till 15th of the December. In the winter and in the monsoon, usually the cyclones do not form. My second question is, can I ask second question? Yes, sir. My second question is, as you show in your so, you know, slide, you know, the developer's future, I think from your slide, if someone wants to be climatologist or meteorologist or whatever, uh, atmospheric science should be taught very heavily in the geography. Sir. Atmospheric science. Yes, that sir. That needs to be included, you know, heavily. Yes, sir. I, sir, I do agree here. Yeah. And uh, I think, uh, sir, when all these institutes are uh, already joined here, as I have seen, that many students from Rajasthan and uh, UP and many other institutes have joined our discussion here. There should many be institutes a, many should have, 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 have MSc degree, MSc books in atmospheric science only. But that sir. should be included in the geography as well, I suppose. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, what I am proposing here, sir, that this proposal uh, of inclusion of the atmospheric science in the geography and geography in the meteorology, um, everything, they, they are all associated subjects here. And there should be a proposal which should be given to Ministry of Earth Sciences that whenever there is a recruitment here, the geographist, I should say, the student from geography, there should be given more benefits because neither the we take electronics or uh, physics or uh, these students are having any exposure to meteorology or uh, this thing geography. So geography students are having more benefits over other students like BSc and MSc physics, electronics, statistics, who can be utilized in the meteorology. Especially, I'm going to this professor to the Secretary Minister of Sciences. I'll request him, sir. The geography uh, students, those who are having a lot of practical experience in the field. Uh, analysis that should be included for the recruitment for a uh, post in the future. Absolutely, yes. absolutely, sir. Also, Hello. the ecology also is governed most of the by you know, by geographers. Yes, the system that is a big role played by the geographers also. Uh, sir, I have seen the syllabus of this MSc geography, and I was really impressed the way this Adamas University has included all the things, and other universities also are there who are having a lot of information about this geographical uh, uh, locations, GIS applications, remote sensing, network analysis and many things are there. So, I think that geography students will be having a more valuable is, contribution to the This is because of, we have very excellent faculty in geography. Most of them very excellent faculty. That's, that's the reason. Thank you. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yes. I have yes. one query. Why the eastern coast is affected by cyclone rather than the western coast? Sorry, why the eastern coast of Sorry. India? Why the eastern coast of India is Hello. more affected uh, than the western coast because of the cyclone in Yeah. Uh, there are few, so many reasons that why 
there are more cyclones in the bay of bengal in comparison to the less number of cyclones in the arabian sea the number one the geographical situation or this thing here peninsular uh, in structure of this bay of bengal it is a wider and uh, not much wide it is going you know its uh, geography that how this thing here moreover the temperature of the bay of bengal is always higher than the arabian sea and whenever the winds are being set up here the more and more winds are there in this bay of bengal they produce the circulation here so number one is a higher in the temperature number is the geographical or the bathymetry of this bay of bengal and third is the uh, vorticity should i should say that is a circulation which is available in the uh, bay of bengal but uh, last year also you have seen some of this cyclones in the arabian sea but it is a usual or uh, phenomena that more are there in the bay of bengal in comparison to arabian sea Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other question? If you have a question, you can unmute yourself and ask uh, directly to Doctor uh, Pratham. Uh, sir, one question from from uh, our YouTube uh, viewer that. Uh, how the cyclone can change the air quality in the lower part it's not about ampan it's about the all cyclones that uh, lower south bengal is experiencing in the lower atmosphere usually the bigger part of the life cycle of the cyclone remains in the sea so in the say about its overall duration from the low pressure till the dissipation when it is going over the land here around 90% time is there over the sea here where this low air quality part does not play any role there but when it is coming on the coast part coastal area and it is having the landfall here certainly uh, it will have its effect here and the pollution will be reduced when the system is going but i think i am not a expert of this air pollution and the air quality index here so it is difficult to say but it will be having some impact where the pollution will be reduced for quite a few days once the system is moving over the edge thank you there are few more questions uh, sir uh, if someone wants to collect data on meteorological parameters like rainfall temperature relative humidity for recent days uh, then what is the best way to get the data nowadays the procedure is very simple imd has got a setup in uh, pune that is known as national data center any institute or any individual can register there and the institute is requesting for the data from research for research point of view the charges are very very nominal and the data is provided within 7 to 10 days in a cd or dvd here and the registration fees is only 5000 rupees for any uh, quantum of the data so from the adamas university if you want to know to get the data uh, real time data which is quality check data from this imd over even for a longer period of 10 20 30 years for research research point of view so this data is available and that can Please request letter to go to National Data Center, India Meteorological Department, Pune. Yes. So from institution, uh, we can uh, receive the data. And if somebody wants to go for individual uh, yes, studies or the individual purpose here, then the price or the charges will be more. Okay. Because uh, this is not allowed for any professional kind of the thing or for business point of view. it is for the research and uh, for the students and for the paper section okay. thank you sir uh, sir uh, there are more few more questions uh, i want to ask just one question uh, yes. yes please uh, i am dr kutam associate with the department of geography and national sir uh, can you throw some light uh, on this recent uh, today in the news being discussed sir, on the amphan cyclone that is intensified yes sir They are either rapidly intensifying two years, two, just two, three hours back. I was seeing in the news. Yes. yes. 
itself because it is getting all favorable conditions and as if it is formed uh, far off from the coast within the deep sea it is there then it is getting the energy from the sea of the water that is a latent heat uh, which is created by the evaporation of the water drops here so longer the time it remains in the ocean the greater is the intensification of the system you can see today itself when it was having uh, that particular uh, stage uh, of extremely severe cyclonic storm now it has gone to the super cyclonic storm when the wind speed is expected to be around 232 to 240 km per hour so more the time it remains in the sea more it is getting in intensified and sometimes it is getting some uh, uh, more energy from the sea itself in the different parts of the bay of bengal and that is the reason that it is getting more and more intensity while it is traveling towards the north of the bay of bengal north and north thank you sir sir there is one question uh, why uh, is there any association uh, between the enso phenomena with this uh, cyclones of bay of bengal yes it is it is there there are the two things if you know uh, al nino is also there la nina is there and so is there so all these are having different kind of the impacts here but many of the people say that uh, uh, al nino and uh, el nino la nina and enso are more related to the southwest monsoon and lesser on the tropical side uh, but for those who are the actual meteorologists are for the risk, they are doing the research uh they feel that there will be some impact here which i am not able to uh, accept it any what kind of impact will be there but these are having some impact on this southwest monsoon which is going to take place after few days say from first of the june onwards uh, hello sir, hello, sir. Yes. Yes. yes can you hear me i am dr abira datta roy uh, assistant professor from bakula college I wanted to uh, know uh, uh, whether uh, upper air temperature data is available uh, at IMD or uh, uh, any locations if I want, like radio sonde data. Yes, yes, I could understand. Uh, uh, Madam, I just want to tell you a very important thing as you are talking about this radio sonde data. Now we have got fifty-six stations all over India. where you can get the radio sonde data and these 56 stations are having this gps radio sonde data so if you want to take without any problem directly you can go university at university of wyoming u u w y o if you go university of wyoming you can download the data including all raw data and your uh, temp messages everything is available and otherwise if you want to get it officially from imd so again you have to write our national data center uh, pune office imd you can get it so it is available here and you are getting a very good quality data and nowadays is it is a gps based system the flight goes up to 30 32 kilometers so vertical profile of pressure temperature humidity wind speed direction is available with a high resolution data and this data is available on university of wyoming which is freely available or if you want to take it officially from imd it is available from imd thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir so uh, there are uh, some questions uh, similar type of questions that why bay of bengal is nowadays experiencing more cyclones than arabian sea than uh, indian ocean so everyone sir wants to ask this Uh, as we have already seen from the last around 130 years of the data that the bengal is more prone and vulnerable towards the cyclone because of the typical topography geography of that area bathymetry uh, sea sur higher sea surface temperature of bay of bengal in comparison with the arabian sea arabian sea is wider you can see here there is a bay of bengal is having a typical structure there so so many factors are coming in the uh, climatology here so this climatology has been prepared by this imd that because of so many reasons which are valid reasons for the formation of this cyclone so uh, yes 
thank you sir uh, request uh, requesting all the participants please mute yourself uh, yes thank you uh, sir um, there are a few more questions on this uh, why is it suddenly the temperature has increased uh, in few days uh, is there uh, amphan cyclone is uh, responsible for this like recent days like past two three days we can see the sudden temperature rise so one question from shantani that is this amphan cyclone because of that uh, you are talking of this high temperature observed in the bay of this west bengal or kolkata which uh, one sir it is not mentioned maybe he is uh, asking for the south bengal okay so usually this happens that whenever any uh, weather phenomena is approaching to this area temperature rises whether it is a western disturbance or it is the cyclone this happens that before the arrival of this lot of humidity is there the temperature rises before this but when the system goes over that heavy rainfall takes place and after that the temperature falls so it is a natural phenomena that whenever it is going that the temperature increases yes it is because maybe because of this uh, Amphan cyclone, which is maybe responsible for the increase in the temperature. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, there is one question from Devo Pratho. How he can plot the wind speed contour for the tropical cyclones in pathways for different altitude? Different altitudes for the cyclone is not possible because the measurements are not there when the system is there on the sea. When the system is moving within the sea, some buoys are there where the uh, wind observations are available. On the basis of that, only it can be seen, or the wind is estimated from the satellite. But if you want to see the vertical profile, this is available from the vertical structure of the cyclone through scatterometers. A scatterometer is the basic instrument available in some of the satellite, which gives us the vertical profile of the wind within the cyclone. But it is an estimation. So from the scatterometer observations, if they want to go, then only it is possible for in situ observations, which we call it as the real time observation for the cyclones. The vertical profile is not possible. Okay, uh, sir, there are few questions uh, regarding the employment process of uh, recruitment process of climatologists and meteorologists. Sir, is there any? Uh, particular processes by which the students from geography or there are students from other backgrounds i can see uh, that if they can they want to apply for uh, for the post of meteorologist or climatologist what is the procedure for that as i stated in the beginning that so far students from geography are not able to apply in the imd or any other department here but some which are related with this thing ecology environmental science and atmospheric science in the different universities and places other institutes they can join there but if the scope is there in the uh, imd as a meteorologist here which may be there in the next few years here then only it is possible but no, sir, so I, far uh, sir yeah. i think they are not from geography they are uh, some mtech students uh, they want to ask this question so okay if, any procedure for them yes so i tell you now that the recruitment takes place at the two stages one is the assistant level where the qualification is bsc in physics electronics or physics maths chemistry or we take in a, a computer engineers engineering electronics uh, electronics and communication engineering so they can go at the assistant level which is the junior level and another and last year in the previous week there was a recruitment of almost 1100 um, scientific assistants so that entry level is that those who are the graduate in science or post graduate or btech they can join the senior and next year also we are expecting around 5 600 uh, junior meteorologists can join in there but there is another entry level at the senior level of the group a where the meteorologists can directly join and now it is this uh, designation is not the meteorologist it is the scientist b scientist c d and so on. so there is a scope for the pg students only msc physics msc electronics and btech mtech and phd in science they can they are welcome physics electronics 
then the electronics and communication, all those instruments are having a good prospects uh, in which they can join. So procedure is direct uh, either through staff selection commission or through UPS. Okay, sir. Sir, I think all the questions uh, you have answered all the questions. Uh, I, I, I have, have one question, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, I have one question. Sir. Uh, uh, just uh, your need your very great suggestion. Uh, ideally, the environmental science uh, inclination, sir. which major part will be inclined to geography or chemistry? What you think? Environmental science, I think it should be a part of uh, geography. Okay. Because in geography, many things are uh, should be included. Atmospheric science, then uh, geography, GIS, and uh, climatology, meteorology, everything should be a part of the geology. Because in the chemistry, the scope of the environmental science is very limited. Okay. So more applications may be there if the geography uh, subject includes this environmental science and atmospheric science. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hello. 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 Yes, yes ma'am. Uh, sir, could you say something about IMD weather prediction, weather uh, forecasting? And uh, another question, why it is not accurate at all times? Could you say something about that? Uh, I, I just wanted to know here because nowadays 90% people are telling, appreciating that nowadays IMD forecast is much better. So I am bit surprised on your question that why it's not accurate because up to three days if we say the minimum temperature is around say 30, 32 degrees Celsius, the variation is hardly 0.5 degree or we say maximum okay. is 42 degrees Celsius. But if we are going for a longer duration, say three days forecast is very precise. But if you go 5 days, 7 days, 10 days, always some errors are there because of lot many factors which might affect in the next 48 hours or 72 hours. So I agree with your question. If our prediction is there beyond 5 days or 7 days, there may be slight error. But I can tell you with a guarantee that our prediction and accuracy has gone up to the 90 to 95 percent accuracy. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, uh, there are a few questions from YouTube that I would like to ask you. That is there any website to get the data for cyclone track forecast from different model? Uh, different models are not giving the data directly uh, for a particular user because they have to log in to that particular. For example, Japan Meteorological Agency, European uh, Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasting. So many, almost 10 to 15 uh, European and uh, US agencies are there which are having this thing, cyclone trade prediction. Even if the cyclone is formed in the Bay of Bengal, but you can see from the Japanese side, Chinese side, then from the uh, European and American sides, not information is there. But usually after login uh, to their website, only you can get it, but and they do not give the access to everyone. Only IMD and some authorized users are given the access. But they can make a make an attempt here for uh, Japanese side, Japan Meteorological Agency and European agencies. But if you want to get the data from all, it's uh, slightly difficult. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, um, uh, there are lots of questions from uh, like related to COVID-19 because of this lockdown effect, uh, the surface temperature, humidity has gone down and so also the amount of particulate matter. So is there, uh, all these are how they are impacting on the formation of uh, Amphan cyclone. So, as I am clubbing many questions together, they are very related. I, I tell you this has been found very correctly, uh, what he has stated is very correct, that PM2 5.5 and PM10 values have drastically come down because of this thing, uh, lockdown. No, industries are not working, manufacturing industries are not there, vehicles are not turning here. So the pollution is not at all there and you can see a very clear environment is observed here. 
So that is a fact. The question is Gangotri seen from Saranpur. Gangotri picture seen from Saranpur. We got a picture from Saranpur. Yes. Yes. You can see the Gangotri peaks. It's so clear. Yes, I, I, I fully agree, sir. Sir, I am in Delhi now, and Delhi the temperature is only 42 degrees Celsius this year. Otherwise, every year it goes 45, 46 degree when it is coming to the month of May. That is the 18th May. So it is the grace of the less pollution. I should not say the grace of Corona, because that is the negative thing basically. But it is there when everybody is confined, no pollution, no vehicles, no manufacturing industry. And you can see even in this Ganga water also how clean it is now. But once again, that the cyclone formation, I feel that it is not having any uh, effect of this pollution more or pollution less. Pollution more may be there, but pollution less, I think it should be. So there is, uh, so we will take one last question. Uh, sir? Yes. Mahadev, sir. Sir, Mahadev, sir.
series of baby nuts and uh, maybe uh, twice a, a month in a week uh, we'll be coming with some baby nuts and uh, thank you uh, all of you for your active participation uh, if anyone from the participants wants to share uh, his or her experience in uh, briefly uh, you are welcome we can take two three uh, bites first time uh, webinar in India. So can you please share your uh, experience and thought on this or you can give us some suggestions how we can improve more? Uh, actually it's it uh, the, the, the webinar discusses already uh, the, the scope in India and I think it, it will be more um, relevant if it's worldwide explain and of course some some of the um, participants should do so that there will be no interruption interruption in regards to discussing certain topics okay. yes definitely we will uh, take your words and definitely we'll be trying this thing from our next webinar so uh, if anyone interested uh, to share uh, his or her experience yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Sir, yeah, uh, please start. come one by one. Both. Uh, yes. Okay. And please. Uh, and me. This is uh, Dr. Priyanka Ghosh from uh, Era University, Lucknow. Uh, I am actually in the liberal education okay. department. Okay. And, but I have a geography background, so I joined this webinar. So, uh, I, uh, so I am very uh, happy to see the engaging discussion. And thank you. I want to thank the organizers to you know for to organize such uh, such a webinar during this time. I have one just it's not a, a comment, but I just want to say that could we also get like all the participants uh, participants today? If we could get also notification for your upcoming webinars, uh, that will be very uh, nice so that we can stay connected. And also, I would like to say that uh, if you can also organize any webinar on environmental studies or environmental science and some related topics like air pollution or uh, like you know some emerging issues related to environmental science uh, i would like to uh, be a uh, you know, part of that kind of webinar also that's just all i, I want to say and thank you dr pradhan for uh, for your presentation it was very engaging thank you thank you ma'am thank uh, yes uh, we know that uh, Dr. Pradhan uh, gave us very enlightening uh, lecture and uh, ma'am just you will be very happy to know that our next webinar will be on the sustainable environment and climate change. That will be uh, maybe in the next week so date has not been yet confirmed so that we cannot declare it here but definitely all of your email ID is now with us. We will be letting you know all of you. Thank you. And uh, we will take uh, one more uh, we will allow one more participant to share his experience. Dr. Mukund Kadam. Sir, please unmute yourself. Sir wanted to tell. Uh, okay, okay, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, madam, thank you for uh, intellectual uh, uh -huh. uh, in during the lockdown period. I appreciate uh, Dr. Devendra Pradhan, sir, uh, because he has given an excellent speech to all job rappers, and he shows the uh, way for the road, uh, or we can say road map for future geography in 2020. I appreciate you, madam, very heartily. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And thank you, all of you. Thank you, Dr. Pradhan. Uh, of course, we are indebted to you, sir. Whenever I have asked you, you have uh, come physically to Adamas University or virtually agreed to uh, deliver the lecture. Uh, thank you so much for all your cooperation. Thanks a lot, sir. And of course, I would like to give special thanks to Professor Sharkar Dean, sir. Sir has arranged uh, this seminar, webinar, as well as the uh, YouTube streaming. So, sir has taken the responsibility for all the technical uh, support. Thank you, sir. I would like to thank uh, Professor Ghosh, uh, who is always there with us uh, since the beginning. And I would like to thank all the participants. So, thank you. We hope that we will meet once again in our uh, coming webinars. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And big thanks to thank our uh, just uh, uh, coordinator and convener, everything, uh, Kostiri Mukharji. She is so enthusiastic and uh, so energized. Whenever sir, it's not me, sir, sir, very sorry to this. Uh, like, uh, everybody, every say, member of the also GW department. department. So, yes. uh, our task only to facilitate this one. And uh, uh, really, uh, I'm very happy at the end of this session that we come to a very successful end of the session. And this credit goes to the every faculty member of the Department of Geography. And obviously, uh, uh, um, very importantly to Dr. Devendra Pradhan sir, that uh, he, he is so nice and effective and very enthusiastic in his speech. And every aspect is so nicely analyzed. That's very great. So, so we are thankful to you also. And uh, Professor Ghosh, and I think uh, every, uh, every time he is so, so enthusiastic and uh, helping that and guiding us, rather his guidance, is very important. So everything at the end is successfully done. We are very happy. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Now, should we end here? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.